cover letter, write an effective cover letter right now. Uh, I'm Caroline Stefko. I'm Helen. I'm Jennifer. I'm Diana. Okay, so a lot of students have confusion about when is it appropriate to write a cover letter? What situations do I need to send a cover letter in? And so essentially there are two basic types of receivers for your cover letters. There's going to be people that you don't know and people that you do know. And it's really discouraged that you send a cover letter to someone that you don't know. It's best to make a contact beforehand, if at all possible. In some cases, you won't be able to do this. Like, for instance, if you're responding to a blind ad, which is basically an ad uh, job posting that only provides the company's address, no telephone number, email, anything like that that you can use to get in contact. Um, and there are also cases where you can try to contact your potential employer, but you just haven't been able to do it. Maybe they're on vacation, they're just unavailable for some reason. So in this case, it would be better to send a cover letter than to do nothing at all. Um, and with people that you do know, you're going to have different situations, which include uh, sending a cover letter before an interview, um, after an interview, or when you're looking to set up an interview. And it might not necessarily be for a job posting that exists. It could be for a job posting that you're hoping will exist in the future. And Helen's going to talk to you about how to tailor your cover letter for each situation. Okay, so we've narrowed it down to about seven tips for a superior cover letter. You'll know why that's the truth in a second. Um, the first tip is write to someone in particular. Never have your cover letter to what, it be in the junk mail folder. To do that, definitely always address it to someone. Never write to whom it may concern. It seems unprofessional, and it's kind of just, I guess, throwing a dart into the dark. Make no errors. Um, Always check your typos, check your grammatical errors. Your cover letter is like your job interview. You know, you don't want, it's the first thing that someone sees of you, and you don't want that to be a messy and, I guess, wrong cover letter. Um, third one is personalize. Um, never send a merge, co a merge cover letter or resume of any sort. Uh, merge mailing means that you kind of make your own cover letter or make your own resume and just send it to everybody. Always tailor it to what company you're applying for. Um, good appearance. You may be wondering why Caroline and I are dressed kind of casual, jeans, and not looking very professional, and Jennifer and Diana are looking very professional. Your cover letter is like your interview outfit. It's something that the person who is interviewing you sees before they even see you. Definitely has to be very neat, very um, nice. Doesn't have to be fancy, but it has to be all grammatically and uh, spelling correct. Okay, um, friendly opening. This means that um, remind your contact of how you guys met. If y'all met at a networking event, if you guys met through a personal contact, remind him of that and make sure you guys have something in common. If you've never met him before and it's a, um, applying for, replying to an ad, um, make sure you research the company, know what field he is in and know what, um, I guess, common interests that the company has, start off with something that you guys have in common. It makes you seem more personable and you'll be remembered more. Nice. Showcase your talents and skills. Research the company before you send in your cover letter and resume and make sure that your skills and experience match and tailor theirs. Okay, and the last one is close with an action statement. This means that the very end of your cover letter, you should always say, it was so nice talking to you. I'll email you next week. I'll give you a call next week. Um, maybe you can set up an interview time or you can let me know what you think. So never wait for the employer to contact you. Always contact them yourselves. Another important thing is thank you notes. People like to respond to people uh, who have good manners and say thank you. Usually when you think of thank you notes, you think about um, sending them after an interview, but you can also send the one beforehand. You can use it as a confirmation to the time and date of your meeting, and um, you could also use it as a way just to simply say thank you for meeting with me. One of the best times to send a thank you note is right after an interview. You should definitely send one right after an interview, or at least within 24 hours of your interview. Um, it builds up on, a, uh, creates a positive impression, and you can use it as a way to follow up or um, address any concerns that you may have. One of uh, another um, situation where you could send in a um, thank you note is when anyone helps you out with your job search. You can send it to anyone who has given you a referral, to someone who has just simply been supportive of you during your job search. Um, it builds up on the positive impression and it, 
and good mannerism, and it could potentially help you out in the long run or in a later situation. Sometimes thank you notes are often overlooked in the job search, uh, but while resumes and cover letters get the attention, thank you notes often get results. Another tool that you can use in your job search are GIST cards, which are basically a concept that the author invented himself. Uh, GIST stands for Job Information and Seeking Training. And it's going to be a 3 by 5 card that um, is basically like a mini resume, or you can think of it as a paper version of your 15-minute elevator speech. Uh, the basics that you're going to want to have on it are your name, two ways of contacting you, uh, a broad objective that basically lists some of the types of positions you'd be interested in. You want to keep this general so that you don't limit any potential uh, positions that you might find out about by distributing these cards. Uh, in the longer section, you're going to want to talk about your education, your training, past experience that you have, any pertinent job skills for the positions you're looking at. And then you're also going to want to list your availability and then adaptive skills, which are basically personality traits that are make you a valuable worker. And so, just cards, really, you're going to want to distribute them as widely as you can. So, the first step is to do this in your network. So, I would send one to Helen. I would give one to Jennifer and one to Diana. And then any time that they uh, learn about a position that would be relevant to me, they can pass along my information and they can also get back to me about it because they have my information right at hand. And so basically this is a networking tool and also good in your job search because you can give them to your potential employers when you send your resume, when you send your cover letter, you can send them after an interview, basically so that you will stay in their mind and they don't lose your information, say, if they misplaced your resume. After you've done your cover letter, you can um, now work on your resume, and there are three ways to improve it. You need to know your objective and be sure you present your objective clearly in your resume. You need to list your most recent and significant achievements, especially the ones that pertain to uh, your writing your resume for a specific job. And you need to make sure that it is readable and clear and that it has a good impact on whoever you're sending it to. After this, you can use these seven steps for a quick job search. You need to identify your skills and know your objectives, so know what you're looking for, know where and how to look for a job. Um, make sure you spend at least 25 hours a week looking for a job, and if you are unemployed, make sure it's actually more. You need to schedule two interviews a day and you need to do well in those interviews. And after your interviews are over, you need to make sure you follow up with the person you interviewed with. Thank you, that'll be it. Are there any questions? Okay. You said 24 hours for thank you notes, is that correct? Right after, yes. 24 right after. hours right after your thank you notes. Okay. Uh, after your interview, I'm sorry. Would these thank you notes have to be like handwritten or no? You can um, email. Definitely choose between email or the snail mail. Just make sure that if you do um, choose to send it by letter, you have you know a time period where you know where it's going to be sent and when they're going to get it. If you think they're going to appreciate the formality of a written business, mm -hmm. business letter, then you can definitely do that as well. But email is generally accepted. Thank you.